1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5 and 7. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy son walk not in thy way. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nation. But a thing displeased Samuel, where they say, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they said unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. My message today is 10 reasons why we have a president. What? 10 reasons why we have a president. He go, oh, a governor, or oh, a leader. Because we look at the first Samuel, go to God, the, the children of Israel, they want, they want a king because they say Samuel's son is not qualified to be king. We want to be like other nation so we can have someone to reign over us because we don't want God to reign over us no more. So they bug Samuel, they bug Samuel, and, and God said, give them what they, what they want. And God said, I'm going to give them a king. And the king was Saul. But Saul, glory to God, was a carnal man. So 10 reasons why we have a president. Hey, glory to God, his name is Donald Trump. Oh, but his name is Donald Trump. I'm talking about this message is 2020. 10 reasons why we have a president. Number one, to bring peace. Now, there's 10 Ps why we have a president. 10 reasons why we have a president and it's 10 Ps. The first one is to bring peace to America. People, not war to be racial to the Mexican or the Chinese or the Asian people. That's number one. Number two, to bring prosperity to all ethnicity of people, not just the wealth or the well-off. Three, to bring people together in unity as the United States of America. Four, it's for protection in cities not just in one city in america but chicago is a city that being forgotten is because a black mayor is in office five is to fulfill the promise that he has made to america hallelujah people placed by placing his hand on the bible before god and man six a forgotten purpose and every and and join his title, but a time to fulfill is the is the health of our children. Not opening school with the guideline through CDC. Now rushing for economy, while thousand upon thousand dying each day. Seven, the president need to come up with a plan to stop the violence in Chicago, rather than ignoring it. He need to send the National Guard in to stop the violence. Eight, we need to pray for our president because the Bible command us, commission us. The president need to introduce the prayer because people, because money, hallelujah, cannot deliver us in a time of corona pandemic. I ain't say hallelujah, pandemic. I call it a pandemic. Hallelujah. The Bible says, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, glory to God, in Second Chronicles, hey, glory to God, 7, 13 and 14. He said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Hallelujah. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. What happened, Jesus? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And turn back ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. This is a solution of Corona going away. But we don't want to do that. We are running, we are fighting about wearing masks. Number nine, he's the most powerful man in, in America, but his power is limited because he's not God, he's a man. Our God is Almighty, the God of the universe. King, the king in 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 uh, Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar extolled God, Hallelujah, as being God after he was a beast for seven years.
a good God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, hallelujah, he's a man and not a God. He's limited. God can blow on him. Number 10th reason, the president need to evoke the presence of the Lord rather than speaking about what he's going to do with evangel evangel hey glory to God in America. Hallelujah. Evangel in America, my friend. Hey, glory to God. We as being a people, we need to stop and look and listen and learn that the man in the White House, he's not God. What do you need to do? You need to look, listen, and learn and live that the man in the White House, he's not God. He's a mortal man and God is still in control. So this message, my friend, is to tell people we got we as being Christian, we have obligation. Our obligation is to pray for the president. And the president, glory to God, need to you know own up to his bargain about the thing that I mentioned in this message. I stand by the Bible, I stand by the word of God. And if the president ain't living what the Bible says ought to live. God can move him down. Let's talk. Let's call Saul. What happened to Saul? Saul disobeyed God. And Saul was removed, hallelujah, by death. And then, de and then David took over the throne. So I'm telling you, my friend, God is still in control. Ten reasons why we have a president. We have a president for what? For peace, prosperity, for the people, protection, promise, purpose hey glory to god come on now and protection hallelujah and we have a president glory to god for prayer we ought to pray for the president and the president need to evoke the presence of the lord that's the purpose my friend of being a president hallelujah in your country i'm not talking about just talking about america god is in control when i say god is in control and we're gonna bow to god some of y'all bound a statue some of y'all bound to him he's not god he's a man a mortal man with flesh and blood ashes the ashes and dust you you are so i'm saying to you my friend us christian we have an obligation we ought to pray for the president amen we ought not to bad talk him, but we ought to pray for him because God is in control. God is the potentate. God still rule heaven and earth. God is sovereign. He God is sovereignty. Hallelujah. And some of us, we forgot, we forget that God is in control. I'm not going kill to kiss up to no man. I'm not going to worship no man. I worship God. Hallelujah. So 10 reasons why we have a president. <laughs>